All right. So again, remember, you don't have to participate. Um, if I see your screen is on, I will go to you, but you can just wave and say, I'm not going to participate today or let me know in the comments. You're more than welcome just to listen. Um, okay. So let's get started. Welcome everybody to the three year anniversary of Coffee with Devin. I am so grateful to be here. I am so honored to connect with you every month at this free event where we have a round table discussion of your intuitive experiences. We answer questions for each other and we just have discussions that help all of us here. You're here because you're intuitive. You hear, you're here because you had a calling to be here on this earth at this point in time. And we need community. We need to be able to come together and stick together as we work to raise the vibration of this earth, of our lives here and for future generations. So I'm so honored for you to be here today. Like I said, this Coffee with Devin started three years ago, actually on October 1st. In 2019, we met locally here in San Antonio. A group of us sat down at a round table and had some amazing discussions. And we continued to meet at least once a month, sometimes more often, until 2020 hit and everything went online. And although we were all still really seeking this community and seeking being together, we were able to connect in this way, which allowed us to expand even further. So now we have all these amazing participants joining from around the world to discuss how to use your intuitive abilities, how to stay in alignment, how to connect with your angels, and to support each other through this because we all need help with the work we're doing. We need to be able to support each other as we go through these energies that we're experiencing and we work together. So I'm gonna go right into these angel messages right now and then I'll have some fun announcements and then we will move into the round table discussion. I'm so excited about this. So I sit down and I connect with the angels before I come on here and I always say a prayer of intention that I connect only with the highest vibrational beings and that these message be meant for you at the time you come across them. So whether you're listening to them now or at a later time, notice what resonates with you and leave the rest behind. And it's a group message, so there might be something that's not for you, but if there is something that resonates with you, write it down, write it down in your book of evidence so that you can go back and review it when you're feeling challenged or you're forgetting what the experience was like and you want to keep building your intuitive abilities. So notice that because hindsight really is a powerful tool. We use that in a lot of things in our world, and this is one of the ways you can use it to develop your intuitive ability. So write things things down that resonate. Don't spend too much trying to understand why it resonates right now because I don't want you to miss something else. But this recording will be on YouTube later, hopefully later today, <laughs> um, where you can go back and listen again. So also don't feel like you have to get everything right away. I will be protecting the privacy of those joining on the call. So don't worry, there, it will just be audio only um, so that you don't have to feel like you know, this is not a sacred space because I do want it to be sacred, but I've had so many requests for, from those who can't be here live or those who want to hear the messages again. That's why we do it this way. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for being here. And thank you angels for these amazing messages that we are going into right now. The very first thing they wanted to bring up with us was the energy we're going to need to tap into for the next month. So if you've seen my October, 2022 messages, or even if you haven't, Check back in with those because that still is going to be a big theme for the rest of this month. And this is kind of an update between now and the next coffee and some reminders here that they want us to really tap into the energy of grace and tapping into our heart. And we have a journal prompt or a, a speaking question prompt we're going to be talking about later in this coffee that this is applying to as well where we need to notice what emotions are helping us stay in a place of grace so that we can enjoy love, we can tap into our heart, and we can feel content in our home. So anything that's going to bring nourishment to our surroundings, our, our body, our soul is going to be really important with this. So notice the things around you. This was actually a message we got in the October messages and maybe even in the last coffee, if I remember quickly, but being grateful for the things that are already in your place, this energy actually all the way through next year in 2023, through a lot of the year is not going to be about quantity. It's going to be about quality. 
And it's going to be about having that one item that can go the distance with you. This is why having a spiritual practice is so important right now. And you guys are so far ahead of the game that you're here. So don't get too stressed out about what it is that you need to do. Just trust in the practice you're already doing. And then we can keep discussing ways to add to that practice as we go through it. So again, we want to be tapping into that emotion of abundance and emotional well-being where we feel nourished. So when we get to the prompt later, this is going to be a big thing. Sometimes it's just about going to a place of self-nurturing and really going deeper into why you feel the way you feel at the moment and doing what it takes to get you feeling better again and back in alignment so that you can be there for those around you because that's a big thing coming up for us. What we do have to look forward to is that we're going to be feeling some childish excitement over these next few months as well. So think of that holiday spirit you get with the way kids are the night before Christmas when Santa comes. We're going to be able to tap into that energy of being a kid. So I encourage you and the kind of the homework with this is to try to write down a few things today and within the next new moon that we have coming up, try to write down some things that make you feel like a kid again. What are Go back to memories from when you were a kid where you felt that excitement and enthusiasm for something. If you watch the way a kid is the first time they see a cute puppy and the excitement they get and they just gravitate toward, towards it and they don't even question whether they have time to play with that puppy or whether they should be playing with that puppy instead of doing some other chore, they just go have fun. And so they're asking us to take time to remember and reflect on those times where we really felt that. Now, here comes the caution again, though, because we have to make sure we're not romanticizing the past, which is an overarching thing for all of this year about being careful with the concept of nostalgia. You've heard me mention it many times. For those of you who are serious joiners, it's a big topic Robbie and I are referring back to. It's in the astrology that we have to be careful not to hold on to the way things used to be, because where we're going, it's going to be even better, but we can't imagine it. So if we start going back to, oh, I wish things were the way they were in the old days, we're holding ourselves back in a big way. So when you're tapping into the past, when you're tapping into this energy is the energy of joy and excitement where you didn't question what was coming next. When you saw that puppy, you didn't question, oh, now do I have to go clean up the mess the puppy made? You just went and played with the puppy and you didn't think about it beyond that. So that's what they're asking us to do. And that's something that's available to us throughout this energy. So go back to that message. When you see things in the news headlines or you're getting phone calls from people who are in a place of anxiety, try to have some things in your toolbox ready to go back to that energy. So that's why they're giving us that homework to try to write down at least three times that you can think of where you felt that excitement of the way that kids feel on Christmas Eve. Now, one of the things they want to give us with advice is they want us to make sure we're not going into a big place of doubt right now. That's going to be something that is going to be a challenge for a lot of people where we start to feel like we're on more path, the right path. We start to feel like we're moving forward and we're getting things in the direction we want them to go. And then we're, things are going to come in that are going to cause us to have doubt. For those of you who follow astrology, we know Mars is in Gemini, which is a big time for thoughts. And then Mars is going to retrograde at the end of October. So that's where we might have th some things come in that cause us to doubt our mission and doubt our purpose. And so the advice here is to stop denying the reality in front of us and seeing only what we want to see. We need to believe things can get better. We need to tap into that energy of belief and expect new and positive vibrations because a lot of what we've been going through over the last century really has been about karmic lessons. And many of us have incarnated here on, at this point in time to do a lot of ancestral healing and to make things better for ourselves now and for those coming down the line. We also have a lot of ancestors helping us right now. So those of you who already are tapped into your mediumship abilities or already feel connected with your ancestors, pay attention because we're gonna be getting a lot more signs for that. So expect things to improve, but it is going to be steady improvement. And so a key word to think about is steady improvement with this advice here, because it's not going to happen overnight. But if you think about good things that you've achieved in your life, none of them were quick fixes. None of them just happened out of thin air. You did have to put your intention to it. You did have to put your energy behind it or else it didn't last. If it seemed like an overnight sensation, it usually didn't last very much longer than that. 
So one of the things too, that we, they're asking us to do is to hold space for this energy of connecting with our ancestors or our guides and getting information that will help us move through this energy and tap into that childish space, uh, childlike space. So that, and childish too. But when you're thinking about holding space, it's, it's going into a place where you can remember those amazing times where you felt like a kid and you felt so excited about something. Maybe it was the excitement of company coming, you know, the buildup, like you knew it was going to be fun when the company got there, things like that, that you can hold space for that. You can go tap into, bring that into your spiritual routine is what they're saying. Now they want us to know there's going to be a lot of quick worded energy coming about, especially in the news headlines. So we're going to have to really protect ourselves from when energy comes in. Are you feeling fear or anxiety from something you're hearing before you react to that? Try to go into a place of calm and get centered so that you can feel like you can approach that in a proper way with a proper response, because we're not in a good energy to just cut things out of our life right now. If we get too quick to cut people out of our life because, oh, they said something I could never forgive them for. Be careful. If you hear, if you feel yourself getting caught in that feeling like, okay, that's it, I'm done. Before you actually take that action, go at least sleep on it. Ask for guidance if that's really the right thing. Because we're not really in a place to be ending relationships right now. We're about building relationships and really focusing. That's what Libra season is really focusing on the relationships that reciprocate, that feel balanced. And so, especially over the end rest of Libra season here in October. And then as we move into Scorpio at the end of October, where it's going to be about setting boundaries, we want to make sure that we're noticing where things are out of balance. And instead of just being too quick to cut the relationship, Go into a place of quietness and peace and ask for guidance about the best way to handle this because we are going to see other people wanting to do the same thing. The other people wanting to say things like, that's it, I'm done. And it's a very chaotic energy to be doing that in right now. We want to be doing things from a place of stillness. So that final message was to bring in that prayer, that connection with balance. And so you can ask God to help you attract the people in your life that will help you bring balance and even ask the angels for help with that. So never forget that you can ask for help. So ask for help from the angels bringing balance into your life. All right, well, that wraps up the angel messages. And so now we're gonna go into some of our fun announcements we have here. If you're joining late, I was talking about how this is the three-year anniversary of Coffee with Devin. It did start off in person and is now online, which allows all these amazing people to join with us. And I'm so grateful for that. So let me just pull up my notes here so we can go over some of the announcements that I wanted to make sure we get into. Uh, first of all, the next coffee is November 9th. As you know, it's the second Wednesday of every month. So if you'd like to mark your calendars for that same time online, 10 a.m. Central. Also, don't forget, we have my Facebook group, Facebook group, which is a private group that you can ask questions and join. And for those of you who are already doing spiritual work, please post what you're doing. Please share with us if you're interested in doing it. Ask questions. If you're a beginner, you're an apprentice, ask for people to do homework with you in that group. We're all here to support each other and all ships rise with the tide. The other thing I want you to make sure to remember is that I am going to be uploading this to YouTube later so you can go back and look at it. And then also, if you haven't taken my free five-day challenge yet, my free five-day journaling challenge, you get an angel message every day. You get a free PDF you can download or you can use digitally to help you understand how angel message the angel message applies to you and how you can use hindsight and use that energy to understand how you use your intuitive abilities. Because we're all born a little bit more prone to use one version versus over another. And then if you focus on the intuitive ability that's already natural to you, then the other abilities start to come in. So don't worry if you're, if you're saying, well, I tend to feel things, but I want to just know them. We'll focus on the feeling and the knowing will grow. Okay. So then also, let's see, I think, okay, we're here to the, the big announcement. <laughs> um, I, my team helped me come up with this giveaway. It's for my uh, journal. I released my custom journal, Book of Evidence, Proof Your Angels Are With You. I released it back in March and we did a giveaway on Instagram. And if you had the opportunity to join it, 
Um, we used an app called Comment Picker to make sure it was a random, so you know it was randomly chose. And the Ruber, the winner of this book of evidence, Proof Your Angels Are With You, is at Ruby Fizzle. I believe the announcement went out a little earlier than I meant for it to on Instagram. So uh, Ruby Fizzle already is aware of this, but if you're listening, congratulations. I can't hear, wait to hear what you think of it. When I created this journal, I manifested it from my Taurus moon. If you understand astrology, Taurus is about quality, durability, and manifesting things. So I felt like, you know, we want to manifest a deeper connection with our angels. I've got to do it from the moon. So it does have some hand stamped gold foil. It has a really quality, durable cover that has a great texture and feel. It has custom templates in here to help you track and so much more. I don't want to go on about it too much more, but you can check out a lot more about that on my website, devondewer.com. All right. So now let's go into the round table, which I'm so grateful all of you are here. Thank you so much. And if you do want to participate, please keep your camera on so I know I can get to you. And um, if you don't want to, you do not have to. The prompt I want to offer you today is what are your go-to spiritual tools for handling chaos? To avoid panic for yourself or to avoid those around you panicking, what are your go-to tools when you start to feel chaos around you? Now, I'm going to tell you some of the things I tend to go into, but I'd love to hear that from you as well when I get to you, if you want to. I'd also love to hear if you took the journaling challenge, how it went for you, or if you have questions, or if you're in it, how's it going? And I also want to hear any questions or if you want to share an intuitive experience. We all need to hear what other people are experiencing. That's a big part of what this is for. So before I start uh, calling on people, let me just go into a little bit of how I like to uh, approach when I start to feel chaos around me. Okay, so you know, I think we all know kind of what that feeling of panic is. A lot of times the first thing we do is we stop breathing. So if I'm noticing a lot of, of you know, chaos going on or chaos within me, especially in my mind, I go into a place of breath. And my favorite go-to one, I know you've seen me do it many times, is I will take three deep breaths. But after each breath, I say, I am in divine flow. It's one of my all-time favorite pocket affirmations that you can go to quickly. You can do it while you're driving. You can do it in your mind if you're with a group of people. So first, I like to go to breath. I'd like to hear if that's a big thing that works for you guys, because we don't want our body to go into a state of panic too, because it could just be our mind that's in panic mode and there's not really any danger there. So we go to breathing first. And then once I feel like I'm back in a place of that, I will start by asking, why is this chaotic for me? You know, I'm trying to understand, is it the energy around me that's making things feel chaotic or is there something within me that is chaotic? A good example for me would be this morning, um, my daughter, my younger daughter woke up saying that she didn't feel that well. We well, have a very packed schedule today and for the rest of this week. And, you know, I thought, okay, well, how are you feeling? I took her temperature. She seemed fine. I said, go ahead and get in the shower and, and see if that helps you feel better. And I went and sat down. I did my breath work and I started feeling chaotic again. And then I thought, okay, why do I feel chaotic? Well, first of all, because I want to make sure I'm there for her. Secondly, I want to be able to do the things I have committed to for today and this week. And I got really calm. I did my I am in divine flow. And I thought, how can I handle this? Okay, well, I've got some people that could probably help me if I need to be on a phone call or on a coffee while she needs help. I have some people I could call on that can check in on her and make sure she's okay. I can do things right up until the coffee so I can make sure she's settled. So I got in a calm space. I also did some of my extra affirmations and I thought about, okay, how am I going to, what do I need to do to help her feel better? So then I went into her room to check on how she was doing. She was out of the shower, dressed for school and said, mommy, I feel better. I don't want to miss school. It's pajama day and I feel good. I want to go. <laughs> so she had just had a little bit of a rough night. Like I said, no symptoms or fever. And she was off to school and jumped out of the car, happy as can be. And we were back in divine flow to get right on track with everything I had this morning. So that's just a little minor example where I felt some panic coming up and there really was nothing to panic about. If she does start to feel bad again, I'll go pick her up and we'll be fine. But that was something I wanted to share with you when I was thinking about a prompt 
for today because I loved it. If you missed the last coffee, we had the prompt of what are your tools for releasing anger? How do you handle it? And what are they release? Some really great contributions there. So make sure you go check out that last coffee if you didn't see it or if you just need a reminder. All right. Well, thank you again for being patient with me for all those announcements and everything. And I'll just start going around the screen. The first person I see on the screen is Kelly. Hi, Kelly. How are you doing? <laughs> you're Yeah, you're muted. I know sometimes it takes longer on the iPhone to unmute. <laughs> Hi. <you> Hello. <laughs> uh, you, you want me to respond to the chaos question? Well, it's up to you. Do you want to? And do you have an intuitive experience you want to share or a question? Whatever order is good for you. Um, I would like to share, if you don't mind, a book that I'm reading. Oh, I would love that. That's another great thing we can do on here is share resources. So please do. This, oh, wait, I'm blurred. <laughs> Hold on. I'm rather high maintenance today. Okay. Okay. This, can y'all see it? Oneness. Oh my gosh. I can't recommend it enough. Um, reading it, I'm about that far through it, like more than halfway. It's, it's amazing. It's a channel text by somebody by the name of Rasha. No, actually, Rasha, I think, is a channel being, I don't remember what the person's name is. Anyway, it's really delicious. Um, another thing that if I can figure out how to do it, I will put in the chat an amazing podcast that I listen to. It's by a fellow by the name of Rich Roll, and it is do, it's doing a deep dive into mysticism, and he interviews uh, like five or six people. Uh, the only one I'd ever even heard of was Marianne Williamson but he interviews five or six people and I listened to it for the first time on a walk. And by the time I got home, I knew that I was gonna have to listen to it again and again and again, and that I was gonna have to sit down and write about it. This is just some of what I wrote from some of the people. It's uh, amazing wisdom. And I will leave you with these three, with these thoughts uh, from one of the interviewees. Her name is Julie Piat. Uh, she goes by Srimati. You cannot transcend by talking about it. You have to prax, practice accessing your transcendent awareness. Um, it's just an amazing one. And I came away with another several book ideas. Another one is the awakened brain. I don't know if you can see that the awakened brain. It's hard this, to see. If you, can you put both of those books in the chat? Huh? Will you put both of those books in the chat? So everybody can I will. The Thank awakened you. brain takes the position. It's written by a PhD scientist and professor says that we have an innate, uh, spirituality is innate. We come hardwired for hardwired for it. Religion is something that we get by our circumstances. It's environmental. We get it from our parents, our community, but every human is wired for the quest that all of us in coffee are on uh, intentionally. Everybody has that in them wired to do it. So that kind of says where I am. I don't feel a lot of chaos. I think that if I had a moment of chaos, I would just stop, close my eyes, ground myself, breathe, and probably go write it in my book of evidence. So I love that what you said earlier in the quote you were reading from the book about it really is practice. It's it, we all have these abilities, but a lot of times it's they come to we'll have a download or we'll have an intuitive hit, and then we'll kind of wait around for it to happen again. And then we start to forget 
what it was like. And then our brain starts to tell us it didn't really happen. And so this is why writing it down is really important, but also making it a part of your practice to tap in and connect. That's what I was really wanting to do with the journaling challenge was a lot of, I do see a lot of people cringe when I say one of the best tools is to write things down. They don't, they don't want to take the time. They don't want to journal. They feel like they don't know how to journal or they think, it's just for whining. You know, I hear that a lot, you know, dear diary, I don't have time to whine on a, on a piece of paper when really that's not what I'm teaching you to do here. If you do want to use that as an outlet to get your emotions out, please do. But also you can be tracking the way you're getting these intuitive hits, the way that you're using your intuitive muscle so that when you start to doubt yourself, because again, that was part of the angel messages at the beginning, we might see doubt come in for us. So when you catch yourself doubting something you're doing, that's the time to go hold space and connect um, because they want us to know we are on the right mission. We are on the right path, but it's going to mean writing down those times where we were successful, writing those times that we, we followed our intuition and we were right about that so that it's building that muscle is creating those neural pathways to go right back into that place of alignment. And yeah, I think, you know, this concept of, you know, we don't always know. It depends on what the situation is with chaos. That's why I kind of just wanted to hear what everybody said about it, because sometimes when you turn on the TV, that's all you see is chaos. And Mm -hmm. a lot of us know to just turn it off. Don't, don't overexpose yourself to it. But that doesn't mean that the person that you're going out to have lunch with in a couple hours, didn't just download a bunch of chaos from the news channels and they're in a state of chaos and you're going to be called upon by those around you. Cause that's been that big message there. So I just, you know, I think we do kind of all know that obviously whatever you can do to bring yourself into a place of calm is going to help the energy of those around you. And that's why a lot of times we're asked to simply go meditate when we want to help with the world problems, because by bringing that calm energy in, we're helping our, those around us, those within our aura to feel that and hopefully go into a calmer place as well. And then it's exponential the way that that can grow. Um, So yeah, thank you. That's, that's a really great response to that. Kelly, did you have anything else you wanted to share before we keep going? The only thing I'll say is that while I, try to meditate every single day the word meditate is a stumbling block for me and so just within my own self-talk instead of saying to myself it you need to meditate today or it's time to meditate or you're going to meditate I'm starting to try and train myself I don't know if this will help anybody else but meditation just sounds so hard And I'm not really doing it to just quiet my mind. I'm doing it to quiet my mind so that I can connect with all that is. I want to connect. I want to get wisdom. I want to hear what the divine has to say to me. And to me, the word meditation just seems so passive. It's it's a moment of connection. It's like, I'm going to go call Devin. No, this is, I'm going to go call God. I'm going to sit down mm-hmm. and connect. That's all I have. Thanks. That's great. That's that's great, Kelly. And I do want to add something. So one of my teachers, as many of you know here, because you found me through Serious Joy, um, is Sensei Christopher Wateki. And he talks about in meditation, giving your mind the job of observing your feelings. So next time you feel resistant to meditation, give your mind a job. And that will give it something to do so that then your heart can connect, your body can settle and just observe, not judge, not say, oh gosh, I shouldn't be feeling angry when I'm meditating. You know, (laughs) I I know y'all have heard me say this so many times, but it's my favorite visual of way back when I was trying to deepen my practice on a regular basis. I had little kids, little, little kids. And I remember taking the laundry out of the washer into the dryer going, I'm never going to have time to meditate now. (laughs) And I literally heard a voice. It was my grandmother's Italian voice. And she's been a big mentor for me, both living and that passed away. She said, well, you're never going to have time because you don't make time. And there's that holding space again. And then I was like, well, how do I make time? And it was like, do it while you're folding your laundry, do it while you're washing the dishes. 
and observe. So you're really observing the temperature of the water when you're washing the dishes, but then you're allowing your place to go into that state. You're observing the feel of the laundry while you're folding the laundry and it's bringing you into that calmer peace, which is also helping the whole household so that maybe my toddlers would nap a little longer and I could get a sit down meditation in. <laughs> and it just kind of builds like that. And I think one of the things that happens sometimes is we feel like we're behind on our spiritual practice or we're behind on our meditation. You know, I haven't been meditating. All right, already right there, you're being so critical of yourself because there's so many ways to, to meditate. And um, my favorite way is to walk. I like to move while I meditate. Um, but, uh, you know, you got to be careful that you're not getting distracted with electronic devices or other things. You got to be intentional. But that is kind of one of those things that I thought found really helpful is if you give your mind that job, then, you know, it has something to do. And so then at least, and even if it only you know, stays on task for a few seconds. We all know that that builds over time. Your mind starts to come along for the ride. Um, for those of you who have, you know, follow me on Serious Joy, I have that week, weekly show, Angels Aligning, where I have angel messages that line up with the Serious Joy step system. And that was the message last week was to invite your mind along with your heart and your journey. Invite it to see a different way or to at least trust and have that leap of faith that there is a better outcome that the mind hasn't seen yet. So that's why we can't visualize it very easily. And so when we go back into those places with being in that childlike excitement, our heart gets excited, then our mind gets excited. And now we're more in alignment. So yeah, really, really great share, Kelly. Thank you. Cause I think we all need that reminder that, you know, this is, this is work, you know, <laughs> so we got to take different approaches. Well, thank you, Kelly. The next person on my screen is Melanie. Hi, Melanie. Good to see you again. Hi. Have a great background as always. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I, I, I took the great advice about boundaries last month and it was, um, it's really helping. So I tell, it was definitely what I, I was missing. I'm less tired now and I'm doing like a meditation in the morning to set up boundaries and I'm using the release at night and I'm doing the container thing, which I really like. Cause you mentioned that idea of like creating a container for the class and then being like, here you go. And <laughs> not attaching myself to it. So is that, that helping with yes. the coming down off the energy? Yeah. Yeah. And just not, I mean, I'm still tired. And I don't know if it's just like, I think the energy is just, I think everybody's tired, but yeah. not <laughs> as tired as I was. Right. So, uh, and it's funny cause I, my mom used to tell me all the time that I needed to protect my energy. And as like a rebellious child, I would just be like, no, because that means that you're admitting that someone's trying to attack you and I'm not going to do that. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It's just like, and as soon as you mentioned it, I was like, yeah, yeah. I've been told that. That's a common thing with light workers because we're so driven with our mission and whatever it is that we're here to offer mm -hmm. that we feel like we can do it all. And yeah. that if we're not doing it all, that somehow we're not on our mission. So that's a great reminder there. Was your mom, does she teach you about energy work or was she just talking about it generally, like protecting your energy? Um, a little bit. Uh, she definitely taught me a little bit about it, but she was, I'm like a, a much more sensitive person than she was. So I think that was supposed to be her way of trying to help me because we always had that. She didn't quite get my sensitive view of the world. Um, and so it was definitely like, you need to do this thing. And I was like, no, I'm not that sensitive. I can totally. Right. <laughs> this. I'm fine. Um, so it, it, as soon as that came up, it just like came back into my head. I'm like, oh my God, she told me so many times and I just wouldn't do it. Cause I'd also heard this idea that this is from like Kung Fu teacher back in the day saying something like, as you like get stronger, better, like a better fighter or whatever, then you just encounter different fights, right? You encounter a fight against someone who's stronger. And I thought, well, if I create a really great barrier, am I not just creating a person who will be really good at getting through the barrier? Am I somehow get, creating a problem, right? It's like that idea of like, do I, again, that weird thought of if I protect myself, am I saying that someone can harm me? And I don't right. want to say that. So I'm just not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I can certainly understand and relate to that. I think it's like somehow we're weak because we need this, but you know, we also know that like our body, if it doesn't get enough sleep, it's more susceptible to issues uh, physically. And so we're not weak because we need our sleep. Um, yeah. but yet we don't, so we don't question that you know, we don't <laughs> question, question that we need to breathe. Um, but we do question like our mind gets into this state of, I'm not serving the way I, I can, if I'm not just powering through it. And I, that, so yeah. that you're very, you're in good company for yeah. that. We've all experienced it. It's a big thing that happens when people start to really focus on the work. And the other, the other reason is because then now all these people see your light shining and they're attracted to you. They like the way they feel around you. They like that feeling and that's a good thing, but we get caught up in this mind that, oh, now I should help them because mm -hmm. they saw this in me. And so now it's my obligation. And that's where the work comes in is, is it really your job to do that? And, or is it okay to set a boundary and let them have their journey where they realize, Oh, wait, I need to go do the work. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm not, I can't wait around for something to happen to me. I have to actually go do the work. And that's where it's, it's tricky. You know, I think there's a lot of, um, things out there right now online and YouTube and TikTok and stuff where people can get very caught up in seeking advice and then not actually acting on it. And then they're wondering, okay, why is my life not changing? And then they just give it all up. And then it's just this spiral instead of trusting that, you know, really I, when I hear another spiritual teacher talk about doing the work, I'm like, okay, I want to hear what else this teacher has to say, because if they're saying, you know, come listen to me about how you do this without encouraging you with homework or, or tools or whatever, then that's kind of a red flag for me, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so, so you're definitely doing a good job of being a teacher too, by setting those boundaries for yourself. So well, just that, that idea that people will attach to your energy, not it's not malicious. It's no. not, it's just, just that idea of like, Oh, I like this energy and you go and attach to it. And I think that just changed my mindset about what was happening. Cause it's right. not antagonistic, really. It's just, it's just a boundary. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was, it's, I mean, I mean, part of it, I'm sure like everybody has this, this story, but when you're sensitive and you're not surrounded by other people who are sensitive, you really just think that, you don't realize that other people who are kind of built the same way as you are and yes. that actually yes. it's not that weird. Um, right. But no, I definitely, I had a lot of, you know, my mother was very earth, very solid, very, she was very spiritual, but from mm -hmm. a very different perspective but, than I was. And right. so I just felt I could be more earthy, which I can't be. Um, <laughs> and just I don't work that way. Accepting that is a big leap there too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, for the chaos one, um, I mean, my, I have like the better ways and the worst ways that I handle that, but my worst way is not that bad. It's usually, it's like getting a good fictional book and diving into that world because that is such a beautiful break mm -hmm. from yes. reality. Giving your mind a break. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause it's like the only thing like meditation's great, but if there's stuff going on, it's not going to work, but a really good fictional book. I can, cause I can read a fictional book for like eight hours straight. If it's good, I, I just go mm -hmm. right into that world. And that gives everything a break, right? Um, which I really appreciate, but I'm trying, trying to pick other things. Cause there's almost like an addictive quality with, <laughs> with really good books. Um, and I love the idea of walking. And I tend to listen to my favorite, favorite channel channelers and go for a walk. Yes. Yeah. And that works pretty good. Cause again, it has a lot of different pieces moving. So my mm -hmm. mind, um, can't also have its own conversation very easily. Right. That's a great tip. Absolutely. I love that. Well, thank you, Melanie. It's great to see you. I, I love hearing that you're doing the work and it's helping. Uh, did you have anything other comments before we move in? Move uh, on? no, I think that's it. I just, thanks for all of the help. Cause I would not have done it. Oh, we I hadn't been pushed. Yes. Thank you for the feedback on that. I'm glad. I'm so happy to hear it. Well, let's see. The next person on my screen is Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. <laughs> How are you doing? Good. It's been a while. I know you've been busy. 
How's it yeah. going? How's... It's going good. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's nice to have this time in the morning to connect with everyone. And I can absolutely resonate with what Melanie was saying about having uh, other people that can understand, like if you say, oh, I get a sense of this without like, um, I guess just being highly sensitive um, or empathic, it's, it's nice to have a space for that. Um, so I think I grew up definitely highly sensitive in now as an adult, having the language for it is such a huge blessing. Um, so it's kind of interesting when you talk about being in chaos, because of that, one of the first things that I always have to sit back and I'm so glad that I've learned this, but being able to acknowledge, is this mine or someone else's? Oh, yes. Um, if I've been holding space for other people or if I've been around someone and I'm not aware of where my energy is going, where it's at, um, I have to ask that before I can identify what the next best step is. Um, a lot of times breathing is really an immediate thing for me to go to. Um, I've been learning a lot about nostril breathing, mm -hmm. which is used a lot in yoga lately, which has mm -hmm. been really fun. Um, and before that, sometimes just taking a deep breath. Um, box breathing is another one that are mm -hmm. just kind of immediate things that I can use. Um, and it's fun with kids too. I have eight nieces and nephews and four of them live in New Braunfels and so I get to see them a lot okay. and we were at a birthday party and there was this little boy who was running across the pavement at the pool and he just his feet went out from under him and he landed back and I was like oh, and I caught it and none of the other adults did and so he just was like mm. a little bit discombobulated and so I grabbed some ice and put some ice on his head and just like my immediate thing was to breathe, like mm -hmm. just take a deep breath. And it's just kind of, it works for so many things. And I think that it's important. Um, and a nap. So if I'm exhausted and I've been overdoing things, I think our culture doesn't really emphasize naps a lot. And right. I think that even like 15, 20 minutes for just like, even if you can't sleep because you're so like um energized it's nice to kind of close your eyes and just lay down for 15 minutes I can um, definitely second that I I when I I try to carve out time for naps especially on the days that I know are going to be long because I'm not a very good napper but same thing that you said if I just tell my body okay 20 minutes max let's just close our eyes even if I only drop in to a sleep for four or five minutes, I wake up so refreshed and feeling like I got some guidance. So I also, what the way I feel better about napping because of the societal conditioning that we have, at least here in the U S where you shouldn't take time for naps, you could be more productive. Um, is that, you know, that's my spiritual check-in when nothing else is working. Right. I did meditation. I did these things, you know, but what am I missing? Okay. I'll just go take a little nap and see what downloads. So go ahead. I, but I wanted to share that with you because I forget to nap sometimes, yeah. but it's, it's so helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, my boyfriend and some of his friends went to Spain for a while and it was like, oh yeah, they have siestas over there. I bet that was amazing, yeah. you know? So mm -hmm. kind of, um, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Those are the things that, that came up for me and mm -hmm. Um, it's nice to see everyone. It's nice to be here. Yes, and... it's great to see your face again. I know yeah. we've missed you, but I know how it is with life. So that was one of the reasons I wanted to have these recorded uh, for when people can't join live, but it's always great to see you. Did you have any other uh, yeah. shares, intuitive experiences or questions or anything before we keep going? No, nope. Not right now. Okay. Thank well, you, wonderful to see you again. I'm glad you get to make it down to New Braunfels close to me sometimes, right? <laughs> yeah. Wonderful to hear. All right. Let's see. Let me move to my gallery view so I can see who's next on the screen. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. Next, I see Candace. Hey, Candace. Candace, so you, you messaged me this morning and I didn't see it till it was late. 
So I will say it now. She wanted me to mention that, uh, so Candace has an essential oils business. You can talk about that a little bit and her, um, and, she, and Candace, Jessica, and I created a local community here called Garden Ridge Holistics, where we have events for us all to come together because that's a need we saw for this community is when we were all doing our spiritual work in the closet before we found each other, we didn't have anyone to have these conversations with and to come together with. And we've seen a need for it in the community. So we started an actual local group called Garden Ridge Holistics. And Candace has been a lovely host with her beautiful property. So in uh, what's the day? Tell, tell us about the free fall flow in case people are local enough to come to it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. I think it's on the 22nd. Yes. Let me just check. That's right. It's Saturday yes. the 22nd from, okay. uh, from 2 to 3.30. 2 to 3.30, and it's in Garden Ridge. If, if you're interested, you can uh, message me or Devin. We can give you the address, and we're going to be doing, um, Jessica's going to do yoga. Um, I'm going to do a meditation and some aromatherapy, and then Devin's going to lead us in some journaling exercises. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's right? Um, it's it's a free fun event for us all to come together in community and unite in under her gorgeous oak trees. She has a beautiful property with a lot of farm animals and we're going to, you know, come together in this beautiful fall season. Mm -hmm. So if you're close enough to join us, you are very welcome. Just let us know so we can give you the information. But Absolutely. that being said, how are you, Candice? <laughs> um, I'm really gl glad that the uh, full moon happens because last week was kind of like, crazy and I'm still feeling a little bit of the craziness like taking my car to the shop things happening that's been with a big one for a lot of people <laughs> stuff a lot of yeah oh my gosh it has mm -hmm. been non-stop with car stuff with all my neighbors and my husband and me like it's been crazy um but in, in that like even in nature like I you know I'm outside after I dropped the kids off school and there were like a ton of birds everywhere yesterday, which I have three acres. I see birds all the time, um, but like hundreds of like blackbirds. And I was like, that's interesting. Um, and then there was like a hawk overhead, which I'm always chasing off hawks because there's chickens here. But it was just really weird that they hung around all day yesterday. And I was like, ooh, even they're feeling this chaotic energy. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Somehow I like mixed it in. It was just like, this is really weird. But I definitely felt a lot of release with the full moon. And, you know, me and one of my daughters, we burned our papers up and released it and watched it burn. And it was great. So I was like, all right, we need a fresh start this week like feeling, feeling good, feeling positive mm -hmm. about it. And I do, even though I feel like it's still really shaky and I'm sure you get into the whole astrological stuff uh, about that. But I mean, I feel like we're almost there. It's that other side of like, okay, things are really going to start working out. Like, so I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm just trying to stay positive. I know someone else was talking about like, it's hard to stay positive, but you know, we just kind of have to. And I think you were talking about what um, some of the things that you do to um, like stay grounded. And um, one thing that I always do when I get upset and don't know what to do is just, I go outside and I say, dear universe, thank you for everything in my life. And I just, it just kind of puts me back in a grounded frame of mind that like, okay, whatever's going on, it's a lesson. And like, I still need to be grateful for what I do have. And I'm home with my dogs today. And I got to take a shower without kids today and, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. So just kind of. But also um, being okay with self-nurturing when you do need to have a moment. And like mm -hmm. not feel positive. I mean, because otherwise sometimes I feel like the emotions can raise up to a point, oh, right? Yeah. If we don't yeah. at least, you know, take a moment to be, you know what? I am really frustrated right now. This is frustrating, you know, and at least taking a little bit of time. So how can I nurture myself out of this? Like you're doing, that's been a huge angel message that I've been getting 
the show I do on Serious Joy I just recorded on Monday for this next week. And the overarching thing was just get into nature because you don't yeah. have to understand astrology to read the energy. You don't have to understand astrology to follow the Serious Joy mm-hmm. step system. But what I love about the Serious Joy step system is it does lead you one foot in front of the other to your manifestations. And you don't, in a lot of times, what it is, is stopping and self-nurturing instead of being so focused on the prize that we don't realize the things on the vehicle that are breaking down. Right. I mean, you're probably like the sixth person, including I, I had my vehicle in the shop too, uh, who had a vehicle thing happen in the past Mm -hmm. week or two. So that's what Mercury retrograde revealed the things that weren't working. And then we had to go get them fixed. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I should have put, I journal first in the morning. So I write down all the things that bug me. Then I get to appreciate. (laughs) Right. Got it. Yeah. There you go. (laughs) Onto the page. And then you're saying next. I love that. I love that. No, and I love like hearing your astrology stuff because like you said, like we can feel the energy because yeah, astrology, great. I'm into it, but not like you and so many others who are out there, you know? So it's always great talking to you because you're like, oh yeah, because this is happening. And I'm like, okay, great. That's what I was feeling. (laughs) Yeah. And that was really why we created this community anyways, because whether you're into astrology or not, or you've got some other technique you use to read the energy, it's really, you know, understanding that we're not alone and we are all here on this spiritual mission. Uh, we did come here as spiritual warriors actually. So again, that feeling like, well, so I have to stay on my mission. I'm not allowed to have a, a meltdown in the corner. No, that's not what spiritual warriors do. And it's like, well, actually they do take time to go <laughs> to themselves and retreat and, and build up their energy. And if you think about the way that you know, the biggest leaders that we saw in history in the armies, they were the the big commanders, they had the nicest tents and they got fed the best and all that because they had to be the ones ready to lead the men into battle or, or make the big decision. So they had to have those things to be in the right frame of mind to lead. Um, so we have to also remember that too. It's okay to, um, to take those times to, you know, can have a pity party for a little bit. And then, you know, and we have those trusted friends that we can talk to about it, who aren't going to wag their finger at us and say, you know, you need to get over this because <laughs> that doesn't really help. Right. So I love it. Well, did you have any other intuitive experiences you wanted to share or anything? Um, um, just, I've been fine, you know, red feathers are my sign and I'm finding them like almost every day, like, which is my sign is to, I know it yeah, normally red feathers, like a spiritual kind of thing, you know, like mm-hmm. someone's there, but like for me, it's to keep going or I'm on the right path. Um, mm-hmm. And today I actually found a yellow feather in my yard and I was like oh my gosh I'm so excited so and that one meant um like enjoy the joy of like kind of what's happening around you and I was like okay okay I will all right well listen I do want to always support other light workers so since you have an amazing apothecary in your home and you're also a Reiki (laughs) master would you share with the group how people can find you and please always feel free to post it in the copy Facebook too well sure um yeah um my website is beherenowandlive.com and I make I resigned from teaching last year so I could be a full-time um, apothecary and I do holistic blending for headaches and sleep. Um, I just finished an astrology, no, sorry, Zodiac series. Um, so I have uh, signs, you know, Aquarius and it has corresponding um, stones and flowers and essential oils in it. Um, so I do roll-ons and sprays and now I've been playing around with wax and having fun with candles and making zodiac candles and I'm um, having way too much fun with that but my awesome. website's be here now and live.com right, and awesome. I'm, we'll put it in the comments so people yeah, can I sure see will. all your cute stuff on tiktok and instagram all right thanks Candice mm-hmm. next on my screen I see is Annie hi Annie first Death. time getting to see you on screen in a while <laughs> I'm How are you here? I'm great. Can you hear me? Is everything good? I can hear you. Great. I love your background. Thank you. Yes. Nature. nature. Yes. Um, <laughs> so necessary. It just calms the soul. So, um, 
I wanted to say thank you so much for addressing the anger question because that I was the one that posted that way back when I believe and um, I was really going through a season of anger and having that be spoken about be validated by you, be brought to the forefront, help me to know, again, I'm not alone. We're experiencing these things and it's, it's valid. And um, what, what ended up being something for me that got me on the other side of the anger issue was just really realizing that anger or sadness or rage or chaos, these are all important things that we are meant to kind of bring out into the open in terms of this is a way that we heal. This is a way that we move forward. This is a way that we, uh, anger and, and grief and sadness is from God, right? It is something that we are meant to experience in a spiritually held way. So um, it just was really powerful to have that um, validated in that way. Um, the energies obviously have been, uh, swirling. I love that your question now has to do with chaos because I swear I have a PhD in chaos and what I utilize and use is if I'm really in chaos, right? Things are really going South just, and I think it was touched on in this group. I don't remember who, who mentioned it, but just the feel of things just to kind of put your hand on a table or to, to mm. say, you know, this this table is cold. This chair is hard. You know, just the real tactile physical experiences. Um, and then also in, in chaos, when things get really loud, because I'm super auditory and I have just chaotic thoughts sometimes that come in for me to get very quiet for things that are really loud for, for me to get quiet and get still. And then of course, going into nature, you know, talking to trees. I'm big in tree medicine right now. Oh, you know, it. it's so powerful to just go and commune with that tree medicine and get very still. So, and the other thing that I wanted to say during this time too, is that I don't know if any of you else have been feeling this. I'm sure we feel this, but there's so much kind of, I feel that's just right on the other side. We have so many things that are in the hopper. It's like mm. being like that nine month feeling of like, I am so <laughs> ready to give birth to this baby, mm -hmm. but, but you can't force it to happen. Right. So that's where I'm sitting right now with yeah. these feelings of un I'm uncomfortable. Uh, but I'm also knowing that just around the corner is going to be so much joy and so much happiness and so much promise it's promised to me. I'm just, I'm just hanging on, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just holding space. I love that. And, you know, you just helped me receive another visual with the angel messages from the beginning, when they were talking about going into that childlike place again, for that joy. Have you ever seen a kid that, you know, maybe has a cold or an ear infection, but grandma shows up or there's a chance to go play on the swing with their friend and they just wipe their nose or they, they just run over there and they just ignore the discomfort of the little cold. And, you know, the mom's going, no, you can't get on that swing. You can't go over there. You, you know, you don't feel well. And the kid's like, I don't care. I want to go like the image with the puppy. I want to go play with that puppy. And you're like, no, if you do that, you're going to get worse. And the kid's like, no, I don't care. I think that's kind of what that, that visual came to me when you were talking about being uncomfortable in that nine month of pregnancy where you're like, but this is worth it. Like, I don't care because of the joy that I'm going to get from this discomfort right now. And knowing that it is actually something that you can get through, it's, it's eventually the cold will go away, the ear infection will be healed, the baby will come out and there will be this relief because I, I, like you said about the anger and the grief from God, you know, that's also that way that we're understanding the good. How do you know what it's like to feel healthy if you've never had a moment where you didn't feel healthy? And then that relief, I think we've all experienced in the past where you have an illness just long enough that you forgot what it's like to feel good. So 
even just a little bit of healing, you feel like you could go get all your errands done, even though that's not the best thing to do, but you feel that because you're like, oh, this is what it feels like to feel a little better. And it's that reminder. So I think that is such a great reminder there, Annie, thank you of how things are uncomfortable, but we have these ways that we can kind of distract ourselves from the discomfort in a healthy way getting on here and talking about it, going and watching a really funny movie, going and reading a fiction book that really takes us away. Um, all these things that are right here in front of us. And I love the reminder of the grounding, like this desk feels cold and, and really tapping into the physical. I love studying the nature of trees and um, in the way that they're families and the way that they communicate. So do you have a resource that you, that you tap into for those who aren't familiar with communicating with trees and what you do, or did you just learn it on your own? Um, I'm trying to think of a resource, maybe just being, like you said, being in your communities, you're doing this group coming up, be, be finding out from other people that speak the same language. Someone else in this group said, we speak the same language. And so your heart can kind of follow something and go and go down a rabbit hole. That's also something I've been loving doing, kind of going, letting uh, YouTube or whatever guide me to someone and then kind of checking in with their YouTube page or whatever it is and going like, oh yeah, I vibe with that. That really uh -huh. resounds with me. Like then you can kind of uh, just be in that space. But I think that just using your intuition, going outside and being uh, stop and smell the roses. It's another thing that's been coming up for me. I mean, just mm -hmm. We just feel this extra because I guess that, uh, you know, the, the the planet and astrology is just like, okay, here we go. We're moving faster and faster and faster. But no, we don't have to be so chaotic. We don't have to join in the chaos. Right. We can just say, like you said, I'm in divine flow. Take a shower, take a bath, listen to a song, sustain that joy and um, and know that everything's going to be okay. Well, and I, it really, a lot of that, this energy we're feeling is the activation energy. And a lot of us were activated years ago, maybe born activated, maybe recently activated, but there's so many other people being activated that it's also like, you're feeling other light workers being activated too. You're feeling other people coming into alignment, waking up. And it's like the, um, what is the movie? It's just going right out of my head from um, the Christmas movie. Every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. I think we talked about this on the last coffee, but it's like we're hearing all the little bells ring. You know what I mean? It's like we it's, we know there's something on the horizon that is good, and but we also, can't do anything yet. Go ahead. Yeah. And also, maybe do you sense the the confusion in people? The yes, the, yeah. You sense the I I sense the confusion in people. I sense oh, the yeah. desperation people. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, right. And having I, a boundary with, is this mine or is this theirs? Right. And, and understanding that is a good point too. Did we lose you, Annie? Oh. She'll come back in in a moment, minute. Of course, the name of the movie was It's a Wonderful Life. I cannot believe that that title just flew out of my head right when I was trying to say it. But in It's a Wonderful Life, it, the, the angel says, every time you hear a bell ring, an angel gets its wings. And um, so it's both. Uh, to follow up what Annie was saying about that, and if she tries to come back in, we'll let her finish that. But um, that, yeah, you can sense the confusion and chaos within other people so we can help them by shining our light brighter but we also have to have that boundary like we were talking about the beginning with is this mine or is this theirs um so that we're not taking on that energy by accident and getting ourselves in a place where we're not feeling well so okay well if annie comes back on we will um see if she had anything else to say but i see jennifer is next on my screen are you going to be able to chat today or I see. Yes. Your... Okay. Just, Yay. How just are you? A little bit. Um, I should, I should you. definitely go earlier anytime I do this. Cause I had like mm. something to say to Melanie. So I just say to Stephanie that like, I just kept, you know, but anyways, I forgot it all now at this point, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I could have de definitely used this yesterday. Um, I ended up apologizing to a few people cause I let all the chaos get to me <laughs> by we the end of the did. day. So we it would have did. been really <laughs> helpful yesterday, but it's, it's good to have all those, reminders. And I think one of the things that um, I had heard more recently is like, you know, to really focus on what's causing 
the anxiety and the chaos because oftentimes, you know, we notice 25 things that are chaotic, but really it all had to do with one initial catalyst. And if we can identify that and help resolve that, then it makes life all a little bit better. And so I'm trying to remember that, but I love the, the thing on trees. I never, um, I've always had a thing for trees, but I never realized that was actually a thing. So I'll have to read up on that. Um, so I have a question. I'm trying to think of how best to frame this. Um, but when it came to tools and so, um, so I have a family member who in some way I kind of associate, like if I watch something dark, sometimes I'm like, that's a little bit like this family member. And, mm. um, and so I've always kind of like sent protective things around him and, and hopes that it helps. Um, and then, but I was watching something the other day because my daughter was watching it. And of course I left the room after a while because I couldn't handle it anymore, <laughs> but it reminded me of this person. And, um, and it's, you know, it's, it's kind of scary stuff. And, um, but then my sister called me last night and she, and that she, she's his mother. And she mentioned the was strange, but she mentioned she had had a dream which was like within two days of when I was thinking that again, and the dream was kind of in that same realm and, and, and scary stuff. Um, and so she was just, you know, talking to me about her. And so I was trying to tell her what, what I tend to think to do is trying to like breathe in, you know, God's prana and really focus on the light and everything and projecting that back out over him and enveloping him with that and the hope that somehow that makes a difference. And I was just curious, I know, you know, you can't fix other people, but I was just curious what other tools other people might think of if they're trying to do, you know, a protection around somebody protecting them from themselves kind of a person. Right. But well, I didn't know if y'all thought about that. I My go-to thing is to ask the angels to send extra help to work with that person and their guides. Um, so actually asking it's, you know, you're kind of, is not the same thing as prayer. And you, of course you can prayer, but pray, but you know, if that person's not willing to receive it, that's where the challenge is. So it's really more about accepting. I mean, what you're doing is great. Um, but it also is more about having to accept that they have their own free will. They have their own, you know, energy and they're on their own purpose and mission and their soul is learning things, even if it's in this place of, um, protection. So I would keep doing what you're doing, ask the angels for some help. And then also I would certainly, you know, work on yourself with, you know, trusting that you want an intuitive hit if there is something you can do. So I will say that sometimes, you know, if there's some, if I need to make a phone call, if I need to reach out to this person. If I need to da, 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 give me a loud and clear sign. And I, I mean, there is, you know, it's okay to check in with people. You're not, you know, putting your energy on that. Cause I want to make sure I know sometimes it's like, look, people are on their own path. You can lead the horse to the water trough. You can't make the horse drink all that. Yes. But I mean, what if the horse doesn't know where the water trough is? <laughs> what if you have to at least show the water trough, right? So like, it's like, you can give somebody resources if you feel this intuitive hit to be like, Hey, I need to call this person and see how they're doing and just open up that channel for them to feel your light is okay. But going into that frame of mind that, you know, if I do feel this urge to call and I get hung up on or cursed out or something, you know, comes back on me, like I have to be okay with that. So it's also shielding yourself from the outcome is ultimately what it is. And that's where that caution from a lot of spiritual teachers comes in to be careful not to try to fix somebody is because that's where you're giving your light away. You're giving your energy away. And, you know, you could get wounded back because you're leaving yourself exposed. So as long as you're going into it, shielded yourself of, I'm going to do this, but if this person tells me to bleep off, that's fine. You know, I'm not going to take that on and worry that I said the wrong thing or worry that I should have called sooner or all the things that we, we can let our mind go into, well, maybe if you had just said this, they wouldn't have hung up on you. Mm -hmm. And, and that's where it gets dangerous for our own energy. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a great question. And it's something I think we all face. I mean, this is a time where we need to be checking in with the people that have a tendency to get caught up. 
a little bit in delusions. If you, if you follow astrology, we know Neptune's in Pisces, and this is a time where um, people can talk themselves into a reality that's not really there. In fact, that was part of the angel messages at the beginning is like trusting that, I mean, you need to look at what your reality really is right now. And you need to accept what it is right now. And it doesn't mean you can't change it, but telling yourself everything's okay. You know, like that feeling when you leave the house, did I leave, did I lock the front door? And you don't really know if you did. So you finally turn around, you go back and you check and sure enough, you did lock it. Okay. So now you're in that feeling of, I know I locked it, everything's safe versus driving down the road going, I'm sure I did making the assumption you did. And actually it was wide open and you come home to your stuff strewn everywhere, you know? So it's really setting those boundaries in reality that's going to help us. So that, that means you're feeling the urge to call this person, or you're feeling this urge to, um, do something for this person. It could be even going into a place of meditation to send love. We can do those things to, to hold space for a loved one without having to talk to them directly. But just then again, making sure we're not getting attached to the outcome. You know, was I not, did I not pray enough? Did I not ask the right way? We got to not let ourselves get into that place of doubt, which was again, part of the angel messages. So if we see things coming up, over this next month that make us doubt our abilities, make us doubt our intentions, make us doubt our mission. That's a red flag to us to go hold space for ourselves and do some self-nurturing. So really, really great question there. Did you have anything else you, you wanted to comment on before we move on? No, just, just that I was happy to hear and learn from everybody and just everything always helps. It's so great to see you every time you, I know you're super busy too. Everybody is, but it's, it's really, really great to see your face. Thank you for Thanks. being here, Jennifer. It's good to be here. All right, Jessica, you're next on my screen. So Jessica is the other person in our Garden Ridge Holistics community. If you're interested in knowing more about that, you can also go to our Facebook group, Garden Ridge Holistic on Facebook. And we have the event posted there too. Um, I'm sorry. What's that? I said, I'm going to try my AirPods. Can you like, hear me? Okay. Oh yes. We can hear okay. you. Okay. I didn't know. Cause they hadn't uh, worked before. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm so glad that I finally get to join the video. Cause usually I'm with one of the kids. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> that's okay. So, and then that too, I don't know where I have normally wouldn't share this, but I feel like it, it's a safe space. So the reason that I wasn't able to join till later was cause I was meeting with my lawyer and I'm going through some legal issues with my ex-husband. Mm -hmm. And, um, the reason I bring that up is the chaos. Obviously I've had that because it's dealing with our two children, which I mean, anybody that's a mom, that's, it just hits hard for me. Um, but what I have tried to stay focused on is that all this happens to be happening during Libra season where we're working on these relationships and it's a balance and it's about being fair. And I'm going, what other, you know, season to have any legal issues, but Libra season. So, and my husband's ex-husband's new wife is a Libra. So I'm like, I'm hoping that's going to come out in her through all of this. Cause she's kind of the instigator here, but, um, just there trying to, you know, remind myself that there's some positivity to this. It could, you know, be worse. So I've been kind of navigating through that and the, I like what Candace said that the full moon, she's, she's got glad that it came because I feel the same way. Um, I took a few notes here and then I always try to write down who's talking, but I, don't, I didn't get who was between Kelly and Melanie. She was talking about reading uh, fiction books. Okay. So that I wanted to tell you that really like struck a chord with me because I'm a cancer sun, but I'm Aquarius and Gemini moon and rising. So I'm all air and I feel like I'm always in my head and I cannot, the cancer sun wants me so bad. That's what Robbie told me. She's like, you did yourself a favor with both balancing those out. My cancer sun wants me to feel that I'm up here all the time and I can't get out of my head. And normally it's worry, of course. Um, a lot of times it's great ideas too, but without the fire of the earth, those, those ideas sometimes don't get going. But anyways, I really liked your suggestion about the fiction books because I am the same way. And I just retired from 14 years of teaching. So obviously I was a lover of reading, but as an adult, you don't really stop and find that time. And I would do all of this like self-help stuff before I really, really figured out that what I was trying to discover was my spirituality. It was always reading self-help and always reading nonfiction, but I just started back into fiction lately. 
And I'm sitting here going, why is this so calming to me? And then at the same time, I start to feel guilty because now I'm staying at home and I'm only staying home with one kid. And how dare I like lay down or read a book, you know, but I thought that could be my meditation basically, because it is hard for me sometimes to sit there and meditate with all the air going on. So uh, thank you for that. I really like very that. nurturing. And, and what you're doing is you're taking your mind off the story it's telling you and you're telling your mind a different story. So you're, yes. you're, you are nurturing yourself by doing that, yeah. by telling a different story to your mind for a while. So absolutely. I love that. Yeah. It's like a form of meditation. Yeah. And then I also, I just, this happens to be here and there's not any coincidences. So I'm not trying to do a plug for Candace, but I'm in my daughter's room. And she had her Capricorn roller here. I can't believe I love it. it. You'll see it. So yeah. I just want to tell y'all, I love these. And then the other thing too, is y'all were talking about grounding and it's very hard for me to ground. <laughs> yes. Um, so I don't know if y'all, I was starting to remember these tips that, that my, um, Reiki, um, it was in the past that I had known that she gave me some tips, but because I have barely any earth in my chart, she's like, you have to ground yourself almost every day. And she would tell me, make sure you're barefoot. And yes, you can go outside and yes, you need to actually ground yourself to the earth. She said, but what I like to do is imagine your favorite, the favorite, like best feeling to you on your feet. So is that grass? Is it mud? Is it dirt? And I was like sand for sure. Me I mean, too. I was gonna I see cancer in me. I love the beach. So yeah. I will do that. I will stand up. And so my point is, you don't have to go outside. Yes, it's great to connect with nature, but I remember this tip and it works so well. And you just imagine your feet and whatever that is. And then you imagine white light coming up and just filling, you know, your entire body until you get to the top. And that's always helped me. Um, that's, and then that, that, yeah. yes, that, uh, same Reiki lady. She also, who was talking about, uh, the trees and nature and like how she's been talking to trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, oh, Annie was sorry, I didn't hear what you were asking. Annie was yeah. talking about yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, sorry, I'm getting a call. To drop off though. Yeah. Um. So, anyways, she would tell me that she said, you know, I became a, a literal tree hugger, and she said, if you really listen, they'll tell you so much. And she said how one time, um, she, you know, she could tell this tree was sad, and she said she meditated so much on it that she could tell that it had been a tree that had hung slaves and you think about it and they, the trees have seen so much, you mm -hmm. know? And so that just, that just makes sense to me to stop and talk to nature. But, um, and then the last thing that I wrote down is for everybody is kind of sharing, you know, what they're struggling with or what they're focusing on. And I think for me lately, I have the thing that really helps is for me to do a self check on if I'm feeling a negative feeling, hey, is this, is this my ego or is this, is it coming from love? And normally when you have that chaos or you have a negative feeling, it's like, no, this is straight up my ego. And it sounds so simple, but I, for me, it's if every little thing is coming from love then you can't go wrong. And that to me too, is it almost negates the having to protect yourself because everybody around you, no matter what they do, if you're coming from love, they can't really get in. And yes, I love, like I do the bubbles too. Devin was the one that taught me that. And I do it around my kids and everything else. Um, but then I feel like too, if you're coming from a place of love, you're, you're creating that aura of that white light of that beautiful light that kind of maybe not keeps the negative people away. But for me, the people that I have to deal with every day that tend to be negative, at least in my perception, you know, could be me too. Um, it makes them a little more positive. Right. You know, if I'm just coming from a place of love. So like I said, I know it sounds so simple, but when you think about it and you actually do it, it's a difference to, between talking about it and actually doing it. Right. You really see it happen firsthand. Absolutely. No, that's a great so. reminder. And, you know, that's been that big overarching message. We've been getting a lot about being grateful for what you do have in your reality and it's quality mm -hmm. over quantity. The other day I was doing a meditation in my favorite spot in this one part of my house where the morning sun sunlight comes through and there we've been experiencing this drought here in Texas, but there was a little bit of dew on the grass, surprisingly. <laughs> and I was doing my meditation and I kind of opened my eyes at one point and there was a, uh, just enough sunlight coming through the dew that there was this beautiful sparkle of rainbow light all around 
this little patch of grass, not necessarily like a full rainbow, but you could just see the prism right there. And I just was awestruck by, I was like, that is so gorgeous. And then I realized that's why we're being asked to focus on quality over quantity, because that was a absolutely gorgeous thing created by nature that I didn't have to go to the store and buy. I didn't order. I can't order on Amazon. Well, I guess I could order a crystal and put it in the window, right? (laughs) But you know what I mean? I didn't have to spend any money to have Mm -hmm. that moment with that gorgeous light created by God and created by nature. Mm -hmm. And just embracing that moment is now something I can go back to. So like you said, going back to the ocean, that's what I do, Jessica. I'm a cancer sun sign, as everyone knows. I, I, in the middle of the night, when I'm really struggling with my thoughts, I picture my favorite beach up off the coast of New mm-hmm. Jersey. And I remember what it's like to walk into the surf and let my feet sink in and let the water rush over my ankles. And yeah. even the temperature, I, I visualize it all and try to feel it. And I, before I know it, I've dropped into a deep sleep, but it's those moments. If I hadn't taken the time to appreciate that moment at the beach, I wouldn't mm-hmm. have it later to go back to. And now I've I was added... also going to say, go ahead. Sorry. No, if go. you haven't been paying attention, you know, well, when yeah, you're meditating aware. in the grass there, I, that I'm sure happens so many times to all of us. And most people are not, I mean, I, I feel like I'm pretty aware and I'm still not aware hundred percent of the time, you know, we have a lot. We so have it's to juggle, because you but... were, you were there, you were present, you were actually paying attention and and centered. So you were able to see signs and see the, those beautiful things. I think we're in such a rush so much that we don't stop and see a lot of that stuff. That's well, right so that's, we can't help it, but I, that's why I ask for mm-hmm. loud and clear signs. And it's why I always say, if you think it's a sign, it's a sign, because if you think about all the things you miss all day long, mm-hmm. but then this was in your face or this thought was so loud mm-hmm. or this, you know, then stop. If it made you stop, then it's worth yeah. at least writing it down and mm-hmm you know, you can ask for clarification because we don't want to get caught up in any kind of, you know, we don't want to create illusions for ourselves either. Like I said, Neptune and Pisces, you know, is this real, but we can keep checking in with our gut, you know, was that really Mm -hmm. a sign for this and ask again. And, you know, that's, that's the big thing is don't spend too much time interpreting it at the moment, just go get it recorded or at least observe it and acknowledge it Mm -hmm. so that you can, be aware of it the next time that much sooner you've created that muscle to go right into it. So that's all yeah. really, really great reminder, Jessica. Thank you so much. Um, and now that, you know, we're talking about those things, I think I'll probably go spend some time walking around on the grass. That's another one of my favorite ones up in mm-hmm. New Jersey where my grandma lives. She had that really, really soft grass. Is it Kentucky bluegrass? I can't remember what it is, but it's so soft. And we get too hot here in Texas for it. So I've only been able to experience it up north. And I loved walking around barefoot on that. So I'll add that to my visualization toolbox, Jessica. Thank you. Um, well, did you have anything else before we wrap up or past the hour mark? And I wanted, I'm so grateful for this three year anniversary celebration. Again, congratulations to our winner. I think I might do more of these if you guys are interested. And maybe I'll try it on a different platform. I heard some of you are not on Instagram. This was something my team came up with that was a great idea and really fun to do. I've never done it before. So maybe we'll try it somewhere else too. So other, if you're not on Instagram, we can do it like that down the road, but I definitely wanted to celebrate because I'm so grateful for all of you. And that's been a lot of the guidance too, is making sure we're taking time to celebrate, stop and celebrate the little things. Cause that's what brings in the bigger celebrations. And it, it happens with one foot in front of another, and it is steady progress. Isn't that the key words we got from the angel messages? So thank you so much for being here, everybody. I will see you at the next coffee. Hopefully remember to stay in touch in between, check out YouTube later to hear this audio recording. If you want to go back to the angel messages and again, thank you. Remember to take time to connect with the angels every day. Bye.